All right, we're on to the door on the intercooler install for the uh, performance diesel intercooler going on to the 105 series. So I'm gonna take you right through the instruction manual, each step that we go through and what needs to be done to uh, install this. And I'll give you a bit of an idea of whether you can do this yourself or whether you recommend to uh, get a mechanic to do it. Righto, let's get stuck into it. I've already taken the drill out of the way. Um, that was a little bit mucking around because people have wired the actual lights through the grill. Not the best idea if you're putting lights on, try and find a way to get them through there without actually going through the grill because if you haven't had the grill off to access anything, uh, it becomes a bit of a nightmare when you haven't got any connection joiners uh, on your line. And the other thing was the uh, aerial wire for the UHF was going through that as well, so we've got to be careful of that. Okay, so first things first, this little part under here has got to be cut off. Uh, that nut piece needs to be removed and uh, make access for where the intercooler needs to mount. So I'll get into that now. Okay, just trying to get the camera in the right spot so you can see. Um, the instructions say to mark 25 millimeters and then 90 millimeters uh, down from the thread of that bolt. So I need to make sure the end of the rule is not on the nut and it's actually up on the bolt. 25 millimeters is just there and then 90 being right there. So 25 millimeters and 90 millimeters and then I've just pretty much got to draw a square uh, in the middle of that frame sort of area. So drill four holes and then uh, cut it out with a little body saw. This is a little bit tricky to get in here. Might have to go that way with the blade across. Just trimming the end of that bolt off because it uh, doesn't allow room for this install to happen. Uh, alrighty, that's done. Okay, before I actually go to have a crack at installing this very expensive customer's intercooler, I'm um, just gonna trim up a bit of cardboard for it that I can tape over the front and also tape over the back so I don't damage any of the fins, the delicate parts of the intercooler. That way, I can't damage it. It's not gonna cost me any money. If something just bumps it that you're unaware of might bump it, you're not gonna run into an issue. All it takes is one little tiny bolt to stab through. So what we're gonna do is mask that onto that side. And, oh, that one's the right size right there. Look at that, perfect. Right, now I can uh, tape that up if we uh, just flip it around. That's all you need to do there. Done, now we can install that without fear of hurting the uh, core. Okay, so first test fit. Be mindful not to touch anything. Should squeeze down in here. Oh wow, this is a tight fit. They weren't kidding when they said that, right. So a bit of massaging needs to be done with, uh, so it's touching on the headlight bracket just there. And this side's sort of just jamming in this end bit here. And to get that to go forward in there, I might actually remove this latch, just so that's not in the way. Right, I think we're gonna have to pull the headlight out of this to uh, get this to go in correctly on this side. Right, now, as for fitment into this, well, that's gonna be tight. We have to. Okay, I thought this was a bit weird when I was reading the instructions, but I now understand what they're talking about. I think I have to move that horn to get this to go in where it needs to go. But pretty much, I've got to, I've got to widen the shape of that framework there. Okay, so this to me sounds a bit barbaric, but this is, uh, this is what they require to get the opening 
of this intercooler through. So hitting down on that, might have to come that way in. I think that's what they need. Maneuver the rat across here so we don't scratch the ball bar. And uh, give it some more love taps this way. Seems very brutal the way they designed this and requesting people to do this to their cars. But they're a bigger business than me. I personally would have found some other way to get it through, I think. Right, that's opened up the holes. Let's see how we go for fitment. As you can see on the end of this, it's touching here and it's also touching there. And same goes for this side and that side there. Right, looks like I have to hit that nut across more. So that nut's interfering with the side of the intercooler. So we'll shift that across. Right, it appears that the top has got to be folded over as well. And it feels like that's in the way a tiny bit, but I think if I move this, hammer that up, uh, we should get some joy maybe. And this one feels like it needs a massage as well. So uh, we'll use that hammer, I think. No, nope, needs something a bit heavier. Hit it hard. Yep. Yeah, just keep going like that. Sure enough, the time that I don't have this on me head filming me putting this in is the one time it actually goes in and fits. So a fair bit of massaging is required with this. Um, not really what I would call an easy, straightforward fit. Um, fair bit of work is actually required to get those two through for the first time you've ever, ever done it. So I'm going to pull this back out, paint around in there to make sure that, that doesn't rust and then uh, once that's dry i can refit it okay time to put it in and then start putting the brackets and things on i think that one that looks like it goes here okay so down the bottom of the intercooler there's a bracket here one actually fits to where the factory supplied from the intercooler supplier fits the bolt the other one i had to get one out of our bolt box which is a smaller six mil thread bolt but that goes in that side lines up with a factory threaded hole and then up the top these two brackets line up perfectly with that okay now i've got the intercooler nicely mounted up that's looking sweet and it's looking all square with the body uh straight along looks absolutely mint happy with that time to get on with putting the intercooler piping through. Now, this might be a bit of trial and error and moving and replacing bits and pieces. Uh, just took the tape off the turbo so we can get access straight on to putting that on. And one thing I do do is make sure I've got all my fittings uh, on my hose clamps looking nice and neat and facing the right way. Same way um, to keep them uniform. There we go. Cool. Now these are really good uh, hose clamps that I've supplied with this kit, which is awesome. And this looks like it's gonna snake into there nicely. Oh, look at that. That looks nice. That's fucking, that's really good actually. I actually really like how big the front mount is. Yeah, the front mount's rather large. God, are. there's not much room for me to get the silicon joiner onto there though. Yeah, um, I might have to loosen the uh, intercooler off and drop it down a little bit to get this in because that radiator, I already had to manipulate the radiator bracket here a bit to get that in. Um, I will say that uh, I'm, I'm not impressed with the fitment quality of this kit. Um, yes, it fits, but it's fucking a lot of work to get the intercooler to go in. Okay, so now it's time for this piece in. I had to do a little bit of manipulating and prying and carrying on to get that piece of uh, silicon joiner on. Um, but got it on there. Push the intercooler forward. Yep. There we go. Now we've got it in. There's a boost. And on. yep, we've got enough room there. Okay, so we've got that one all in and it's looking nice and sweet. Uh, time to check out the other side to get to the intake. Uh, tip for getting in uh, silicon 
join us spray a bit of wd-40 yeah a bit of wd-40 on the inside of that silicon joiner will allow that to slip in and onto the intercooler reasonably easy now Now I won't tighten that up because I'm probably going to have to rotate this to a different angle to get it where it needs to go. So the next step will be get the intake piece, the adapter that goes on here uh, that faces the intake this way and we'll put that on and we can then join all of it all together. Now because this is getting boost, I'm going to put a tiny bit of sealant on this gasket both sides uh, just to help it. Make sure it stays sealed and not have any boost leaks whatsoever on the uh, intake. <laughs> right, so this comes, this intake piece comes with a spot we can actually put that for our boost gauge. So we can put that in after, we will do that. Right, so we'll just get this nice and clean, free of any grease and oil. Then we can put a little bit of sealant on it and uh, we can fit it up. sick that is all the boost pipes on okay i've just had to do a reshuffle of just making this silicon joiner here shorter um and then that's lowered this down this was up a, a little bit higher than this piece of pipe before um so i've just put a dob of copper coat grease or anti-seize grease on there and that's going to give us an indication of how whether it's actually going to touch the bonnet or not when we shut it so let's just quickly shut it and see what happens here Cool, that's shut. Let's hope that we haven't touched anything. No dob of grease on the bonnet. So that's an indication that that hasn't been touched. So therefore, there's nothing up there on the bonnet either. Um, that means that's all clearing and not touching and not gonna be an issue or interfere with anything. Right, now to get the batteries back in it, I uh, need to get the air filter and the intake on the, the turbo side of it done and something can go back in and we can start it up okay something i did here just to give me a little bit more room was actually cut this silicon joiner down a little bit shorter um just to bring this pipe down close to the turbo because it had a big gap just there and it had to be cut between this piece and the end of the turbo outlet so filled that in cut that down and pushed it down um, this has given us more room and clearance from here to get down to the front of the turbo. So hopefully um, we're not going to have any dramas getting this in. So I've had to cut the end of this shorter because the back of it, the back of it just there was actually touching when it came up, touching the back of the alternator. Um, so I've cut that shorter so it gets close to the turbo, has a bend close to the turbo, further away from the air conditioning and the alternator, alternator down in there. Okay, finding final piece to the puzzle with this job was uh, for the intake of the uh, turbo to the airbox. The problem is there's an area there that you can put the clip, a spot there that you can put the clip and the lid actually will move and rotate into position where it actually is holding. You can see little two sort of locators there for it and that's fine. Except the problem back here is when this clip goes on, it's loose and there's no pressure there. So therefore, if this car goes in water, the snorkel's not gonna be doing its job um, and water can get in there. So I rang G Turbo, what their workaround, they had a chat to their fitters or mechanic, um, is actually bend, their workaround is bend this clip up so it crimps it down and then gives more pressure there. So I'm gonna give that a go and see how it goes. Righto, that's bent up a lot. Yep, that's getting more pressure there. Push that down, just need to get these wires out of the way, and that's tight. 
That's good. So the sump's on with the oil drain connected. We didn't film that, but uh, I don't think you need to see a sump going on. There's plenty of videos about that. Uh, the batteries have gone in. They are a tight fit. Need to put the battery clamp on that one. And this one's gone in. As you can see, it is a tight fit to its factory position. It is moved over that way a tiny little bit. Then, last little bit that I've had to do just there is mount the throttle cable mount. Uh, that's a very tight fit underneath. You can't have the hose clamp facing down as much as I'd like that down underneath out of the way so you can't see it. There's no room under there when the, it's right in line with where the uh, accelerator cable comes through. So I can't actually hide that one. Just got to connect this. Cool. That's back exactly where it was when it first came uh, in originally uh so the last little bits that need to be done is fill it with oil and put the grill on and i think that's it oh sorry i've got to fit a provent catch can to the rocker cover once i've got that on then we are good to go i can start it without that on though okay i didn't show you the first start up um and i should have and i'm sorry i didn't but the procedure you go through is you need a second person to be cranking the engine and you need to be able to get up here uh, where the injectors are, have the injectors loose, crank it over for a, like a period of time, like 30, 40 seconds, build up a bit of oil pressure um, and just crank it without the injectors um, actually getting fuel in them by having those nuts on the top of them cracked. Then when you see fuel start squirting out of them, you know you can lock them off. So while it's still cranking, um, do it in say two 15 seconds sort of maybe 20 second increments of cranking it to get oil pressure let the starter motor cool down and then get someone else to start cranking it while you're watching for the injectors to start squirting when you see them start squirting you can lock them off while it's being cranked and it'll start running on two or three cylinders get them to stop with the key and while it's still just chugging away misfiring on a couple of cylinders you just go through and lock them off and it'll start running so let's do a start up now. Oh, how good's that? Brand new injectors. Get it running perfectly. And that sounds really, really nice. All right, we'll just let that idle a little bit. Then uh, we'll do an oil, oil level check. Make sure it's got the correct oil level. And I reckon this is ready to go to the dyno tomorrow. Okay, last little bit to go on. Last couple of little things. And today is dyno day, so we've got to get this done. Okay, now that's all done. Heat shield's on. Uh, time to work out where we're going to put the uh, catch can. So what we've got is Provent Oil Air Separator Kit and that's going to be going into this vehicle this is a universal kit um comes with documentation for stickers sorry stickers for when you need to service these um items all your parts hoses fittings uh breather connectors and your catch can there plus it comes with a mount so i don't know where i'm going to actually fit this in here yet it will be over this side near the brake reservoir somewhere. Um, I just need to work out where that's going and then we'll uh, get her in there. Okay, so I was going to sit it over in that corner there, but there's not actually enough room in that side or anything suitable to mount it off. Uh, so what I'm actually opting for is where the fuel filter normally mounts is on this bracket here. I'm going to unbolt this bracket from the bolts under here and then mount the bracket across from that and fold it out and mount the, uh, mount the catch can in this corner on the bracket there. I'm just going to bend this and then uh, put it in. Okay, to get this bracket to fit, uh, I've had to bend it so it can go in there. And I also had to just slightly elongate the two holes. I had to drill this one bigger and then make it a little bit of an elongated and elongate that hole. It was already the correct size. Um, I've also swapped out from what the original bolt was for the mount. Um, made it slightly longer just to allow for the extra thickness of 
this bracket adding in behind this uh, fill, uh, filter mount. So, time to mount that in. Now, before I fully commit to that, I need to make sure that this will mount on there while the fuel filter's on. Uh, may need to just flex this bracket back a little bit from where I've bent it to, or I may not. We'll see. Oh, it's just touching, so just a light flex back in there. And that will be perfect for that. Cool, I'll get that mounted in. Okay, now that's all plumbed in, it's time to get the inlet and outlet of the turbo and the uh, rocket cover to go over to this. So just get the fittings for that and fittings onto that end and we're sorted. Okay, so this is the breather going into the air box or inlet before the turbo. And this pipe that's supplied from Provent goes straight on. Um, I'm just gonna put a 90 degree fitting at the end of that. We'll just slide that hose clamp down. Right, now that's on there. Cut that hose. We can put the elbow for the breather for the rocket cover on. Now, to make this neater, I might actually put another elbow in this. So it goes straight across the rocket cover uh, to the other side. This isn't the best or op most optimal idea that I've got, but there's nowhere else on this vehicle for this to be able to fit, so it's got to go the other side of the engine, sadly. Would have preferred it to be right there. We'll put this here. That 90 degree should be able to weave straight across the engine bay. If I just put a w, bit of WD-40 on those fittings, they uh, slip in a lot easier as well. Okay, now we're over in this corner. We can get these fittings on. We can probably just put that on over the top of that one. Like that. Oh no, we need the bigger one. Cool, that one's done. Now we just need to get the line from the other, uh, the outlet on the other side. Okay, the uh, Land Cruiser is finally ready and ready to take to Launceston to CP Performance. And we're gonna take it up there to uh, just basically make sure everything's all right, fuel mixture wise, for when it's on boost on the dyno. Um, you can read everything a lot more accurately while it's stationary on a dyno than you can when we're driving up the road. So, time to shut the bonnet and get up there. All right, guys, I've got uh, Josh to bring back his Land Cruiser with the turbo install. It's been a few months, actually, since this was done. Um, he said it's going really, really well, but unfortunately, when we finished the job, I didn't get any footage of this vehicle driving down the road. So part of the video at the end of this is going to sort of feel a little bit disjointed, but um, we do get to see it after it's been on the road for a good five or six months. And it's going really, really well for him. No leaks, no problems, um, he said that yeah, it'd probably do with a better pump on it because it's still just got the factory Land Cruiser pump. But um, it's, yeah, otherwise faultless. Wow, <laughs> sooty boy, I love it. All right, we'll shut this up and take it for a drive. Right, so while we drive up to the hill, we're just gonna do a bit of a test drive up. I just thought I'd ask uh, Josh a couple of questions. He's had it on the road a little while now since we've done the job. What do you think of it, mate, since from um, going from what it was before to what it is now? 200% better. Yeah. Uh, heaps better. Cool. That's good to hear. Drive all, don't have to change back gear, go up hills. And... Yep. Yeah, um, yeah, he did He did initially get this put on to assist with being able to tow the caravan a bit better, but uh, he hasn't actually got to the stage of being able to tow. But you have used it off-road. Um, what do you think of it yeah, as an actual oh, off-road rig now? I had a trailer that would be on it the other day. Yeah. About four metres would be on it. Oh, cool. And that towed it up over the Donnell 100k an hour, piece of piss. So. Oh, awesome. That's yeah. good. Most 1HZ to be struggling back yeah. to second gear up there with that much yeah. weight. Yeah, uh, fourth gear, 100k an hour. Please. Yep. No worries at all. That sounds good. Um, what's it like as an off road rig now as well? Does it make much difference, do you think? Uh, or not oh, really? yeah, a bit more grunt. Um, I've only just put all the suspension and tyres on it. I haven't tested those. That yep. Yet, but. Righto. Definitely pulls 
really well now. What's the boost go to? Have you been taking note of uh, what that's going you're up really to? flogging it up over three grand, it'll go about 19, 20 pound, but most yep. of the time normal driving sits around 15, 16, so. Yeah, cool. And it spools up real quick. That's up at 15 yeah. now, just, just on a slight hill. Well, you're gonna, gonna go around him, no worries at all. Sick. God, this has got heaps more than I thought it had when I drove it. Fairly steep hill we don't like using for testing. We're just gonna go slow at the start and just power on now, mate, and see how she goes. Jeez, you're looking for third. Very rare you'll get a car to be going into third up this hill. That's good. Even the lower revs, it's still got like 10 pound of boost there. Mm. That's oh, under 2,000. I have to go back to second now, right? Yep. She is a steep hill, so it's a good test for it. That is pulling really, really well. Uh, he's got bigger tyres and different suspension on it now to when we first did the job. And uh, it's, yeah, I'm very impressed with the results. This has actually come up going really, really well. Um, we'll cut to the dyno sheet as well and show you that. So this is the dyno graph. The uh, first blue line down the bottom here is the original horsepower before it was um, turbocharged. This is actually what it was putting out with the turbocharger on it but before the actual tune happened. And as you can see, the power's pretty, pretty low. Um, but yeah, what it actually performed like and the torque output is huge difference. So you can see the readings here in the middle. I think the uh, 39 kilowatts is a little bit of a lie from what it would have been performing like um, without the turbocharger. I reckon it would have had more power than that for sure. But um, yeah, with the turbo restricting it and the NA tune, obviously that power is going to be low anyway. But yeah, very, very good result and very happy with this build. That sounds pretty good and goes really, really well. I like it.